Example six, we want to look at if functions are inverses of each other. We want to verify if they're inverse functions. So in order to verify if they're inverse functions, what must be true is that f of g of x has to equal x and g of f of x has to equal x. We're kind of starting to take a look at what's called a composition of functions. And then another way that you see is it's f of g and then of x. So that's another way that it's looked at, but for now we're looking at it in this form here. So how this works is notice that our g of x is inside. So g of x is inside here. So g of x represents this function here. Now what we're going to do is if it's f of g of x, you're taking the g of x and you're going to plug it in to this x value here. So let me show you the steps in order to do that. So you do f of, and g of x, this pink, we're going to write that right in here. So just so you can see it. So I'm going to take that g of x and put it in here, this here. So let's write it. This is x plus 1 over 3. So what this is saying is I'm going to take what this pink thing is, I'm going to plug it in to my f of x function. So I'm plugging it into there. So let's write this f of x function. So this is 3. And then I'm going to put this pink box in there. And then minus 1. So x we know is this x plus 1 over 3. And then that's being multiplied to the 3. So that's how you at least plug it in. And then so now it's the algebra part. So we want to see, is this going to equal x? That's how we know if they're inverses, right? We're trying to show that it equals x. So the first thing we do on the left side, we have 3 times x plus 1 over 3. Notice that the 3's cancel here. And so we're left with x plus 1 and then minus 1. Does that equal x, right? So we're trying to prove that. And if we notice here, positive 1 and negative 1, that becomes 0. So therefore, we get x equals x. So that is good. So, so far, that is great. Now we need to check g of f of x. So in order to prove it, you have to do both. So g of f of x. And so f of x, remember, is this purple here. So I'm going to just keep kind of keeping the colors the same. So we're going to take this function. And then what we're going to do with it is we're going to plug it in to this here, into the g of x here. So let's write this. So g of f of x, so first write g of our f of x function is this here. So we're going to write 3x minus 1. So now we're going to take this purple and then we're going to plug it in to our g function, right? This is what the g is saying. So let's write it. So first off, that x value is 3x minus 1. And then now we're writing the rest of the g of x here, this thing is positive 1 over 3. So we just took that purple and plugged it in for our x value in our g of x. So now let's evaluate it. We have 3x minus 1 plus 1, so that cancels out. So now we have 3x over 3, which is x. So that is true. It did work. So this is yes, inverse functions. So in order for it to work is both have to work. The f of g of x and the g of f of x both have to equal x. So go ahead and try these examples down here. One of them is a yes, one of them is a no. Uh, and so just to kind of get that information so you know what you're looking at. Um, and then so try this out. Trying this out, the first one r is an inverse. So f of x and g of x are inverse functions. So if you plugged it in, you got f of g of x, so we plugged in g of x is our x minus 5, and so that's getting plugged into our f of x, so this is x minus 5 plus 5. We just plugged it in there. And then negative 5 plus 5 is 0, and that's x. Then that goes away, and that's just x. Then we have g of f of x, so f of x is this x plus 5, so that goes inside here. Then you're going to take this x plus 5 and plug it into g, so into there. So this is going to be x plus 5 plugged it in, and then minus 5. And then you simplify and you get x equals x. So yes, those are inverses. The second example, 
You have f of x equals 8x cubed, and g of x equals cube root of 2x. So this one is a no. When you plug it in, you do f of g of x. g of x, again, is our cube root of 2x. It's this one here, and I put it in there. Now we're going to take this and plug it inside of our f function. So we're going to plug it into here, where the x is. So this becomes 8 times the pink cube root of 2x, and then that's raised to the third power. Then you simplify. The cubes go away. The cube and cube root go away. So now you're left with 8 times 2x, which is 16x. So that is not work. And once it's a no, you can stop. But just so you can see the work, I continued on. If I did g of f of x, it's good practice. So we plugged it in. f of x is 8x cubed. And we're going to plug it into our g function, where the x value is here. So this is cube root. The g is cube root of 2 times the x, which is 8x cubed. Then we simplify. So we do the work inside. It becomes cube root of 16x cubed. And so no, that's not going to be x, right? The x comes out, but we still have a cube root of 16. So now you can try the homework, number 49 through 52. Okay, all out of the textbook, just to get a little bit more practice.